I'm glad you see through eyes of love a hopeless king and empty Good morning, good morning, family. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made and we are rejoicing in it. Hallelujah. Good morning. Happy Mother's Day. Hallelujah. Yes, it is Mother's Day. What a wonderful day it is. Amen. Amen. Deacon John Poe, good morning to you, sir. Hey, Beulah. Good morning. Good morning. Bree. God bless you. Janelle. Dontrell. Monique. God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy, happy Mother's Day to all of you awesome mothers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is your day. And we celebrate you today. Good morning, Elder Bobby. Hallelujah. As you guys are coming on, you know what to do. Let's reach out and tag and like and share the stream. Amen. Good morning, Mama. Good morning to you. Happy Mother's Day to you, Geraldine Garth. Hallelujah. That's my mama, y'all. Amen. Amen. Sister Gwen, good morning to you. Happy Mother's Day. Cheryl, good morning. Hallelujah. Dr. Gillis, God bless you this morning. Hallelujah. Not for grace. I know if anybody can appreciate the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it's certainly the mothers who are sharing with us on on this morning. Hallelujah. I know the mothers can declare through many dangers, toils, and snares. I've already come. And it's nothing but his grace. Good morning. Good morning. Charlie J. Sister Rebecca. God bless you. Gay Nixon. God bless you. Elder Oscar. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Sister Cassandra. God bless you. You and Deacon Cardell. Margaret Cage. Bless you, woman of God. Sister Chantel. Hallelujah. Raven Sims Jackson. Hallelujah. God bless you, Sister Raven. God bless you, family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning, Brother Harvey. Minister Terry Ricks, God bless you. God bless each and every one of you today. We're going to get started here in a couple of minutes. But I'd like for you guys to make sure that you're sharing the link. Make sure that that you are liking it, that you tag your family members, your friends. Amen. Amen. Good morning, uh, Sister Vanessa, Marquita. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Happy Mother's Day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you and we praise you. We give your name glory and honor for this awesome day that you have made. For it is a day that we've not seen before and it's one that we'll never see again. And because it's the day that you've made, we rejoice and we are glad in it. We thank you, Father, that we, your people, we are blessed and highly favored. We're on the top, we're going higher. And even now, as we gather on this platform, we thank you that you, our God, you are in the midst. 
but where two or three are gathered together, you promise to be right there in our midst. So we celebrate you this morning, Father. We honor you, we love you, and we glorify your name. Now, Father, I decree blessings upon everyone that is sharing on this day, even those that shall share in the, in the near future. We even now declare special blessings upon every single mother, every mother that is connecting on this platform. We speak blessings over your life. We declare that you, hallelujah, are blessed. You are highly favored in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We honor you and we praise you. Have your way in the midst of this, our family gathering. We love you, sir. We honor you and we give you glory. It is in the mighty and the matchless name of our precious Savior Jesus that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, you're right, Sister Rebecca. We love the Lord. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all do me a favor. Do me a favor. Let's put that, let's declare our love for the Lord in the chat this morning come on let's declare we understand that we only love him because he first loved us but let's declare today our love for him if you love him today why don't you declare it come on why don't you let him know i love you lord hallelujah hallelujah come on y'all put it in the chat this morning let's declare our love for our heavenly father hallelujah he loved us first and it, as as a response or in consequence of his awesome love for us, how could we not but love him who first loved us? Hallelujah. That's it, family. That's it. Hallelujah. I agree with you, Bree. I am absolutely nothing, nothing without him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am nothing without you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Bree, for sharing that this morning. Hallelujah. Sister Crystal, good morning to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah and glory. Hallelujah. He is an awesome God. He is an awesome God. Yes, he is. He's a God of power. He's a Lord of glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You are awesome. And we celebrate you today. We celebrate your awesomeness. We celebrate your goodness. We celebrate you for who you are. For you are our God and we are your people. Hallelujah. But not only are you our God, you are our Father. You are our Abba. You're our Daddy God. And we worship you. We bless you. And we praise you. Hallelujah. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. Well, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God and in the mountain of his holiness. Good morning. Good morning to each and every one of you. We greet you this morning in the name that is above every name. And that, of course, it is the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because it is in him that we live. It is in him that we move. It is in him, of course, uh, that we have our being. And of course, we are excited. We are so very, very excited this day as we celebrate one of the greatest gifts, one of the greatest gifts that God has given unto mankind, and that is the gift of mothers. Happy Mother's Day to each and every one of you. Uh, we honor you. We honor you. The Bible tells us to honor our mothers and our fathers that it may be well with us. Hallelujah. 
So I honor, we honor, we honor every mother, every mother that is sharing today, every mother that will share uh, even throughout this week. Uh, we honor you today. Uh, we honor you all throughout this week. All throughout this week, we honor every single mother. And again, happy Mother's Day to each and every one of you. Of course, uh, this is another awesome day that the Lord has made. It's a beautiful day. And I, of course, am Bishop Herb Andrew, greeting you in L-O-V-E on behalf of my awesome wife, uh, Elder Lynette, and uh, the entire leadership team of the Beacon Light Baptist Church of Homa, Louisiana. Again, we greet every single one of you in L-O-V-E and truly, truly love it is. Such a beautiful day to share and such a beautiful day to celebrate our mothers. Um, I'm excited. I really am. I am so, so excited about all that uh, our Heavenly Father is doing in this season. He continues to do uh, exceedingly and abundantly above everything that that we could ever ask, everything that we could ever think. And it's according to the awesome power of God that is at work in us, even as we are speaking. It's so important that we understand, family, in this season and this time that we're in, that the power of God, whether you realize it or not, the power of God is working in you. The power of God works through you. That's why that's why we have to be careful about what it is we speak, what it is we say, because the power of God is working uh, in us and working through us. And our God, he says that he will do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask, above all that we think. And it is according to that awesome power that is working uh, in each and every one of our lives. So again, we are just excited. We're so grateful today uh, for this opportunity to connect with family. I love family. I really do. I love family. I love um, I love my, my, my natural family, of course. And then, of course, I love this, our spiritual family. And I love how even uh, throughout these last couple of years, how, how the spirit of grace has allowed our spiritual family to, to grow and allow us to connect with people who may not be right here in our area. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, we understand that there is no time and space in the spirit realm so we're just grateful. We are so, so grateful for our families. Listen, I want each and every one of you to uh, mark the first Sunday, the first Sunday in the month of June, the first Sunday in the month of June. I know we haven't done it for a long time, but on the first Sunday in the month of June, we're going to be gathering in person. That's right. We're going to be gathering in person the first Sunday of the month of June. Uh, had a wonderful meeting this past week with some of our leaders. And um, we're now putting everything in place so that we can come together right there on our campus. Uh, we can come together as a family in person. It's going to be a great time, a great time of worship, a great time of studying God's word and a great time of fellowship. Hallelujah. Y'all put that word uh, in the comment section, in the chat room for us this morning, the word fellowship. That's what we've been missing uh, throughout this pandemic. And um, even as we're in the process of restoring our uh, sanctuary, we've missed our time of fellowship. But I'm excited. I really, really am. I'm excited because uh, the first Sunday in June, you'll hear more about it um, even as we get closer. But make plans. Make plans to be with us, to be with us on our campus on the first Sunday, the first Sunday in the month of June. Uh, it is going to be a tremendous time of worship, of study, and of fellowshipping with family and, of course, with our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. Also, also, I do want to make mention, even uh, on this upcoming Sunday, on this upcoming Sunday, I thank God for this, uh, this man of God, uh, Pastor, uh, Pastor Corian Gray, 
who pastors, of course, the Mount Zion, uh, the New Zion, the New Zion uh, Baptist Church at uh, 263 Grand Caillou Road there in Homa on next Sunday. Next Sunday, we'll be sharing uh, with uh, Pastor Gray for his fourth year pastoral anniversary. His fourth year pastoral anniversary celebration will take place on um, on Sunday. That's Sunday, May 15th. That's next Sunday. And I'm asking as many, as many of our family members as possible, I'm asking you guys to meet me there. Meet us there, um, right there at the New Zion Baptist Church, 263 uh, Grand Caillou Road. Uh, it is going to be a great time as we celebrate this man of God. And this gives us an opportunity again to just uh, have, an, have a chance to put my hands on you guys, to love on you guys um, in person. And I am so, so looking forward uh, to seeing each and every one of you. So make sure, make sure that you're with us on next Sunday, next Sunday as we share, as we share in the fourth year pastoral anniversary of uh, Pastor Corian Gray of the New Zion Baptist Church right there on Grand Caillou Road. It is going to be a tremendous blessing. Hallelujah. Well, family, uh, let's jump right into the word of God. Hallelujah. Listen, we've been we've been talking about uh, for the last few weeks, uh, we've been dealing with uh, the revelation, the revelation of the resurrection. We closed that out on last week. And um, I want to uh, share something with you today that I believe is really going to bless your heart, really going to encourage your spirit and um, just position you uh, in a place where, where you and I can experience the full benefits of that which is ours because of the finished work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're going to begin a series today entitled The Art of Reclaiming Your Inheritance. Uh, we'll probably be here for a couple of weeks, but um, The Art of reclaiming your inheritance. And, and I'd like for each and every one of us, even as we uh, move through this particular series, I'd like for us even today to focus on this thought. And the thought is expanding your capacity to receive. We're talking about overall, and we'll be talking about this for the next few weeks, the art of reclaiming your inheritance. But today specifically, I want us to focus on the thought or the idea of expanding your capacity to receive. You know, when you, when you study the word of God, it's amazing to me how it is that the Bible says in Proverbs 19 and 12 that the king's wrath is as a roaring lion, but his favor is as dew upon the grass. Notice how the word of God says that, that the king's wrath, the king, the king's anger, it is, it is as a roaring lion. But the Bible says that his favor is as dew upon the grass. You know, the Lord dropped that particular verse in my spirit earlier this week, and I just began to meditate on it. And it was amazing to me because it seemed as if the more I meditated on that particular verse of scripture, the more that my dislike for the devil increase. In, in, in this season of my life, man, I, I you know, I, I have a disdain for, for, for that enemy, the devil. And one of the reasons that, that I do is because when I consider how it is that this particular enemy, this enemy, he really, really doesn't play fair. When you consider how much of a liar he is, when you consider how much of a deceiver he is, then you too would begin, even like myself, uh, you too would begin to develop this, this dislike uh, for this particular enemy. Just think about it for a minute. This enemy, this devil that we deal with on a consistent basis, he's determined to deceive believers into thinking that our heavenly father is, is somehow always angry with us, the king's wrath. 
it, it, it's like a roaring lion. When, and, when, and, and he wants us to think at all times that that our heavenly father is is he's always somehow upset. He's always somehow angry with us. That's why the Bible says that that the devil walks around like a roaring lion. He's trying to imitate the king of kings and he's trying to make us think that the king is angry with us. Now, now understand, understand that there is an agenda and there's a reason for what it is this enemy is doing. See, he does that because he understands that it is difficult, almost impossible for us to, to embrace God's favor and embrace God's anger at the same time. See, see, he wants us to think that the father is, is, is somehow angry with us at all times because of something we did, something we said, something, something we failed to do. And, and, and he does that because this devil knows, he knows that, that God's favor, it is so difficult. It is so challenging to embrace God's favor and embrace God's anger at the same time. So if in fact you think he is angry with you, then you are likely to shun away his favor. You are likely to, to think or to believe that that, that that anger is causing our father to withhold his favor. See, 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 understand, understand. It's the favor of God. It is the favor of God that, that is connected to our inheritance. See, we're talking about and we're teaching on the art of reclaiming your inheritance. And what that enemy wants us to do is he wants us to think that God is angry with us and upset with us because he understands that it's hard, it's difficult, almost impossible to embrace God's favor and embrace God's anger at the same time. And that enemy knows that it is God's favor that that literally connects us to our inheritance. Look at what the Bible says in First Peter, First Peter chapter number one, and um, we'll we'll read beginning at verse number three. The Word of God says, "Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to His abundant mercy, has begotten us again to a living hope." through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance in incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, that is reserved in heaven for you. Now notice how it is that in this particular text, the apostle Peter, he is, he is letting us know that all praises should go unto our heavenly father. We should praise him because he being motivated by mercy, the Bible says, has provided unto us two precious gifts. The Bible says that, that he's provided for us, according to Peter, a living hope, and he's provided for us an inheritance. Now, this living hope, and this inheritance that Peter is talking about, he says that they are ours because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We've been dealing with the revelation of the resurrection because we understand it's one thing to understand the event. It's one thing to know that Jesus was actually resurrected from the dead but it's something else to walk in the revelation of the resurrection. It's something else when you begin to understand all of the benefits and all of the blessings that are ours because of what it is Jesus did, because Jesus was raised from the dead. And according to Peter, Peter says that because of the resurrection of Jesus, we have a living hope. Hallelujah. Y'all put that in the comment section today, a living hope. Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we have, we operate with a living hope. In other words, that word hope, we understand the word hope in the Greek is the word elpis. And what the writer is saying to us 
is that because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, we can now operate with hope with Elpis, we can have a confident expectation of good things manifesting in every area of our lives. And it's all a benefit of Jesus Christ being resurrected from the dead. Now he says that through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we receive both a living hope and an inheritance. And I love the way that he talks about and describes this inheritance because he says that this inheritance, it is, it is incorruptible. It is an inheritance that is not subject to death. This inheritance that we have because of Jesus's resurrection from the grave or from the dead, it is an incorruptible inheritance. It is not subject to death. It is undefiled. It cannot be defiled by sin. Oh, that is so awesome when you really understand it, that the, re the, the inheritance that we have because of Jesus Christ, it cannot be defiled, not even by our sin. Why? Because when we sin, Jesus's blood has already taken care of that. And when God looks at us, he looks upon us as if we have never sinned. So this inheritance that we have, it is an incorruptible inheritance. It is not subject to death. It is an inheritance that is undefiled, that cannot be defiled by sin. And he says that this inheritance, it does not fade away. In other words, there's no expiration date on this inheritance. It, 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 it's a wonderful inheritance that is ours because Jesus was resurrected from the dead. One other thing he says that really blesses my heart and I believe should bless yours as well is that this inheritance, he says it is reserved in heaven for the believers. Now understand, when he says that this inheritance is reserved in heaven, he's not saying to us that that this is an inheritance that that we can only enjoy once we get to heaven. No, that's not what he's saying at all. As a matter of fact, what he is saying, that word reserved, it means to be kept or to be protected. In other words, this awesome inheritance that we have because of the resurrection of Jesus, this inheritance, it is kept for us, it is protected for us in heaven. In other words, we get to enjoy the inheritance here on earth, but God, our heavenly father, he protects it, he keeps it for us in heaven. Oh, that's so powerful when you when you really begin to understand that, that this inheritance, this incorruptible, undefiled inheritance that will not fade away. It is protected. It is kept for us by our heavenly father in heaven. Now, now think about that. Think about that because, you know, here in the, in the Christian circle, we hear a lot of talk about what the devil has stolen. We like to talk about uh, how the devil has stolen this and how the devil has stolen that while, while God says, that, that your inheritance is protected. Your inheritance is kept by me in heaven. So that would suggest to us that, that it's really not so much in this season. See, I, I think we, we give the devil just a little too much credit because in this season, it is not so much about what the devil is stealing. No, the truth of the believer is, the truth of the matter is, is not that the devil is stealing our inheritance or the devil has stolen our inheritance. I believe the issue is, is that we as believers, we have failed to possess what God has already declared is ours. It's not that the devil has stolen it because God protects, our father protects he, 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 this, this inheritance, it is, it is reserved. It is kept, it is protected for us in heaven while we're enjoying it here on earth. The father is protecting it from the heavens. So it's not that the enemy is, is stealing our inheritance. No, God has our inheritance protected. The issue is, 
is that so many believers, so many believers are simply failing to possess what God says is already ours. Hallelujah. Come on, family, think about it for a moment. We're talking about reclaiming your inheritance. And, and, and we must understand that, that God has provided for us, according to Peter, an awesome inheritance. But this inheritance that God has provided for us, this is an inheritance that he wants us to possess and not to just shout over. He, 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 he doesn't just want this to be something we, we celebrate. We come to church and we shout. We gather and we shout over the awesome inheritance. No, it's not just enough for us to shout over it and to celebrate it. But in this season, God, the Father, he wants us to possess, to possess the inheritance that is ours because of the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Listen to what the Bible says in Obadiah, Obadiah chapter number one and verse number 17. The Bible says, but, my, but on Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness. He says, the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. On Mount Zion, we, all, we already know that Mount Zion is the mountain of grace. He says, on the mountain of grace, there shall be deliverance. Hallelujah. On the mountain of grace, there shall be holiness. And he says, the house of Jacob, that's us, will possess their possessions. In, in uh, the New Living Translation, the B clause of that particular verse reads like this, and the people of Israel will come back to reclaim their inheritance. In other words, according to the prophet Obadiah, the, the, the possessing of our possessions and the reclaiming of our inheritance, they are both one and the same. And it's not an inheritance that God wants us to just shout over, but it is an inheritance that the Father literally wants us to possess. Are you guys hearing me today? Now, now think about it. Think about it for a moment, because as we're as we're talking about this inheritance, and I'm I'm just laying out the groundwork uh, for this today. We're gonna we're gonna build upon this in in the next in the next uh, few weeks. But but as we as we think about and as we consider this inheritance that God has provided for us, think about it, because the children of Israel. Their inheritance was literally in the form of land. And, and, and their inheritance, which was in the form of land, it serves as an example or a type of our inheritance that is provided through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Think about it for a moment. Their inheritance, it is, it is, it is a place, the promised land that is that is flowing with milk and honey. And 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 even though the Israelites, even though the children of God, even though their inheritance was in the form of land, when you study their inheritance, it reveals to us some of the blessings that God has within our inheritance as well. Think about it for a moment. In 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 Exodus, Exodus chapter number 23. When you, when you look at Exodus chapter number 23, that particular book reveals to us five things that God says is, is there in the children of Israel's inheritance. In other words, they, 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 there's five blessings that God says when they get into this promised land, they'll, they'll find these things. And, and what he's saying to us, is that the same blessings that are a part of their inheritance, these same blessings are part of our inheritance as well. Listen to what the Bible says in Exodus chapter 23 and um, verse number 25. He says, so you shall serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and your water and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. Notice he says 
that, that as the people of God are serving the Lord their God, the Father is blessing their bread and water. That speaks to provision. And he says as well that he's taking sickness from amongst them. That speaks to health and healing. So a part of their inheritance was provision. A part of their inheritance was health and healing. He says in the next verse that no one shall suffer miscarriages or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of of your days. In other words, when he says no one will suffer miscarriages, no one will will be barren, that speaks of fruitfulness. That speaks of productivity. What the spirit of God is saying to them is that when you get into your inheritance, you will notice that it is a place of fruitfulness. It is a place of productivity. But then he says that he will fulfill the number of your days. In other words, the to for God, the Father, to fulfill the number of our days, that speaks to long life. So in their inheritance, there, there, is, there is provision. In their inheritance, there is health and healing. In their inheritance, there is fruitfulness or productivity, and there is also long life. And if, in fact, it is in their inheritance, then it is also in ours as well. Then he says in verse number 27, says, I will send my fear before you. I will cause confusion among all the people to whom you come, and I will make your enemies turn their backs to you. In other words, he says that I will protect you from your enemies. When you move into your promised land, when you move into this place of inheritance, he says, one of the things you will experience is protection from the enemy. And everything, listen to me, family, everything that the children of Israel experience in their promised land, all of that is a part of our inheritance as well. What are you saying, preacher? What I'm saying is this. What I'm saying is our inheritance, it includes provision. It includes health and healing. It includes fruitfulness or productivity. It includes long life and it includes protection. And the Lord says concerning this inheritance, he says that this is an inheritance that is incorruptible. It is undefiled. And this inheritance, it will not fade away. Now hear me today. Hear me today because in this season, man, it is so important that we have a revelation of this awesome inheritance that the Father has put in place. And, and think about it for a moment. If in fact we're going to reclaim this inheritance, if in fact we're going to walk in it, enjoy the benefits of the inheritance, it is so important that each and every one of us, it is so important that we have an understanding or a revelation of our position as an heir. Do me a favor if you would, put this in the comment section. I am an heir of God. Come on, air, H-E-I-R. Come on, put that in the comment section this morning. I am an heir of God. Even if, 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 if you're, not, you're not listening to this on, on, on Sunday morning, you're listening to this on Monday or, or one of the days during the week, uh, I need you to put it in the comment section as well. I am an heir of God. Because if in fact, we're going to enjoy, embrace, if in fact we're going to reclaim this awesome inheritance, we must have a revelation of our position as an heir of God. Come on, y'all, put that in the comment section. I am an heir, H-E-I-R, I am an heir of God. Look at it in Galatians chapter number four. Galatians chapter number four, and uh, verse number seven, we, we, we've heard this before. It simply says, therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. 
He says, you're no longer a slave. You're no longer a slave who is under the bondage or the yoke of the law. He says, no, you're no longer a slave, but you and I, we are now sons of God. And because we are sons, he says, we are also heirs of God through Christ. I really like how it says it in the um, in the New Living Translation, because in the New Living Translation, it says, now you are no longer a slave, but God's own child. And since you are his child, God has made you an heir. See, 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 we 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 we, we must understand that 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 our heavenly father through the resurrection of Jesus Christ he has made each and every one of us he has made us heirs of God we are his child we are his sons and daughters and we are his heirs i, I hope you guys put that in the comment section i am an heir of God now, 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 let me let me let me explain to you why that's so important. See, because when you begin to understand the concept of being an heir of God, when you really begin to understand that, you understand that an heir it is one who receives his allotted possession or his inheritance by right of sonship. Hallelujah! Oh, that's so powerful. That's so powerful when you really understand. When you understand an heir of God, when you understand that that we have been made an heir of God, then then we begin to understand that as an heir, we receive our allotted possessions as an heir. We receive our inheritance, but we receive it by right of sonship. What are you saying, Bishop? What I'm saying is this as as an heir of God receiving has absolutely nothing to do with merit. In other words, we don't receive because of how we've performed. We don't receive because, because uh, uh, we, 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 we prayed long or we fasted long or, or, or we abstained from this or abstained from that. No, we receive not based upon merit, but as an heir of God, we receive our allotted possessions. We receive our, our inheritance, but we receive it by right of sonship. In other words, an heir receives based on relationship and not based on performance. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, that's good. That, that's good. An heir receives based on relationship and not based on performance. And the Bible says that you and I, because of Jesus Christ, we are now sons of God. And because we are now sons of God, we are now heirs of God. And as heirs of God, we don't receive from God based on how well we perform, but we receive from God based upon the relationship that we have with him as our father through the finished work of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That's why in this season, in this season, this, it, it's so important that, that we have a, a revelation that takes us beyond God just being God. Because, because there's no inheritance that, 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 that comes uh, from, from God per se. No, an inheritance comes from your father. And when we begin to see our heavenly father, when we begin to see God, not just as this being that is way out in, in heaven somewhere. But when we begin to see him and understand that he is my father and, 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 and I am his son. And because I am his son, I am an heir of God. And as an heir of God, I don't receive based on my performance, but as an heir of God, I receive based on my relationship. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. I, I, I like, I like how, 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 uh, Paul says it 
when he's addressing the church at Rome in, in, in Romans 4 and 13. The Bible says, for the promise that Abraham would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed, that's us, through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. In other words, the Bible is saying to us that, that there was a promise that, that Abraham and his seed would be the heirs of the world. That's a promise, family. That is a promise that, that, that we have from our father. And the promise that we have from our father is that Abraham, along with his seed, we are the seed of Abraham. I don't have time to go there right now, but just check it out if you would. In Galatians chapter 3, verses 28 and 29, it will let you know that we are the seed of Abraham. And the Bible says that the promise, we have a promise from the Father. And the promise is that Abraham and his seed, that's us, that we would be the heirs of the world. In other words, what, what, what he's saying is this. He's saying we have a promise. We have a promise from the Father. And that promise is that the Father himself has put in place an inheritance, an inheritance that belonged to Abraham, an inheritance that belongs to Abraham's seed, and that is you and I. We have an inheritance. We have a promise from our heavenly father that because of the finished work of Jesus, he has already put in place for us this inheritance, this inheritance which includes provision, which includes health and healing, fruitfulness and productivity, which includes long life and protection from our enemies. We have this inheritance and, and, and it has been put in place for us by our father. Hallelujah. Now, now here's the question that I want to deal with today, because we understand that the inheritance is put in place for us, and it has been put in place by our heavenly father. Well, the, the question on the table today is how do I, how, how do we, how do we literally um, 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 possess this inheritance? How, how, how can we how can we take hold of this inheritance and, and, and really begin to enjoy the benefits of it? Because I said to you earlier, I said to you earlier that, that, that the inheritance that God has given unto us, it is not just for us to shout about. We've been shouting about the inheritance. We've been shouting about God's provision, shouting about God's health his healing. We've been shouting about God's protection. And, and ultimately, we're shouting. And so many of us are still not possessing. And the inheritance is not given to us just to celebrate. The inheritance is given to us in order to possess. So the question is, how do we possess what the Father has already provided? That's a good question. Well, let's look at the word and let's see if we can find the answer. Look, if you would, at Psalms 44. Psalms 44. Um, yeah, Psalms 44. And um, I, I'll begin reading at verse number one. Uh, Psalms 44 and uh, verse number one. Listen to what the word says in Psalms 44 and verse number one. We're answering the question, how, how do we take possession of this inheritance? How, how do we reclaim the inheritance that the Father has given unto us? Well, listen to what the word says in Psalms 44. The Bible says in verse number one, the Bible says, we have heard with our ears, O God, our fathers have told us the deeds you did in their days. In days of old, you drove out the nations with your hand, but them you planted. You afflicted the peoples and you cast them out. Verse three says, for they, talking about the children of Israel, they did not gain possession of their land by their own sword. 
nor did their own arm save them. Now notice, we've already said that for the children of Israel, their inheritance was in the form of land. And their inheritance, which was in the form of land, it was speaking to that which we would enjoy in our inheritance as well. And the word of God lets us know that the Israelites, their inheritance was not received. It was not received because of their own ability. It says it right there. It says in, in verse number three, for they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword, nor did their own arm save them. In other words, they did not gain possession of their inheritance because of their personal performance. So how is it? How is it that they gain possession of the inheritance? Well, the B clause of that third verse lets us know. He says, for they did not gain possession of the land by their own sword, nor did their own arm save them, but it was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your countenance. Why? Because you favored them. Hallelujah. That's it right there, family. Notice that the Israelites, they didn't gain possession of, the, of, of, of their inheritance because of their ability to fight. They didn't gain possession of their inheritance because of their strength, but they gained possession of their inheritance because of the favor of our God. In other words, in other words, when you begin to understand God's favor, you'll begin to understand that it is God's favor that connects us to our inheritance. You remember I said it earlier. I said it earlier that that devil, he always wants us to think that God is somehow angry with us. He always, the king's wrath is, 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 is like the roaring of a lion but his favor is like the dew of the morning. And, and, and the, 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 the devil goes around like a roaring lion. He always wants us to think that God, our heavenly father is somehow upset with us, is somehow angry with us because that devil knows, that enemy knows that, that it is ultimately uh, uh, impossible. I'll go ahead and say that. It is impossible to embrace the anger of God and embrace the favor of God at the same time. No, and it is the favor of God that we need because the favor of God connects us to our inheritance. They did not receive their land. They did not receive their inheritance because of their own ability. They received it because the father favored them. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah, man, man, listen to me. You know, we, we like to throw words around in, in, in Christian circles. There's certain things that, that we like to shout off, but you need to understand something about the favor of our God, man. Most believers, we, we, we throw that word around, but we really do not understand how awesome God's favor is. When you really begin to understand how awesome his favor is, one day of God's favor can change your life forever. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. You know, we, 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 we're, we're pursuing money, money. Everybody wants more money. When the truth of the matter is, what we should be doing is recognizing God's favor because money is the currency of the world, but favor is the currency of the kingdom of God. And it is the favor of God that allows us to connect to this awesome inheritance that our father has already put away for us. Now, 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 you know, this, this is what I discovered. This is what I discovered in my own personal life. Now this works for me. I this 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 works for me. I I just I just understand now that that the favor of God it will manifest consistently in your life as we learn to rest in the perfect love of Jesus Christ our savior. Hallelujah. Come on y'all. 
What we need in this season is, 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 to, is to embrace the favor of our God. And, 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 and one of the ways to do it, one of the ways to see his favor manifesting uh, uh, consistently in your life is, is, is by learning to rest in the perfect love of Jesus, your savior. In other words, when I when I say resting in 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 the love of Jesus, I'm talking about uh, acting like acting like John. Y'all know John. John was the one uh, who 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 identified himself a, as the disciple whom Jesus loved. In other words, John realized that 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 God that that Jesus loved everybody, but that wasn't good enough to to just to just embrace the fact that God loves everybody, that Jesus loves everybody. No, the Bible says that John would recline and lay back in the bosom, lay back in the bosom of Jesus, that, that, that his bosom represents his love. So John was literally resting in, in, in the perfect love of Jesus Christ. Man, 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 in this season, you and I, we, 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 should, we should personalize the love that 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 Jesus has for us. We 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 should we should start identifying ourselves as the disciple whom Jesus loves. Oh, I know he loves everybody else, but I declare that there is something about this bald-headed, big-nosed preacher that that Jesus loves specifically. So even though he loves everybody else, I declare that I am the disciple whom Jesus loves. Come on, why don't you declare that over your own life? Come on, declare, I am the disciple whom Jesus loves. Come on, speak that over your life. Put it in the chat. I'm the disciple who Jesus loves. I know that, that, that he loves everybody, but I just believe that he loves me so much that if I was the only person on the face of this earth, he still would have endured all of that pain. He would have endured all of that suffering. Why? Because I am the disciple that Jesus loves. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Some of y'all, you need to you need to start putting that uh, on your um on on your on your 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 wallpaper on your phone, on your iPad, on your computer. Just put it on your wallpaper to remind yourself that I am the disciple. That, that Jesus loves. Hallelujah. When you when you signing off on a on a text or, or on an email, you ought to you ought to sign it off. Uh, I, I'm the disciple. Uh, you know, a uh, 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 sincerely yours, uh, uh, Herb Andrew, the disciple that Jesus loves. Hallelujah. Just so you can be reminded that that you are the disciple. You and I, we are the disciples that Jesus loved. And, and, and when you begin to rest in that perfect love of Jesus, man, you will be utterly amazed at how the favor of God ultimately will manifest in your life. And favor is important because favor, because favor is how we, we tap into Favor is what connects us to our inheritance. Remember, family, we don't inherit based on personal performance. We are heirs. So we do not inherit. We do not possess our inheritance based upon personal performance. But we can only possess our promise as an act of God's favor. And it usually comes to us little by little. Did y'all get that? Did y'all get that? See, see, we 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 must connect to his favor because because as as believers, we understand that that we cannot we cannot inherit based upon our performance. And the truth of the matter is our performance would never qualify us for an inheritance anyway. So we do not possess our inheritance based on our performance. We are heirs of God. We possess our inheritance based upon relationship. In other words, the only way that our promise is possessed is as an act of God's favor, and it's usually done little 
by little. Let, let me show you this. Let me show you this. Go, go to Exodus 23. Go to Exodus 23. I'm getting ready to share something with you that, that will literally change your life when you embrace the revelation. Listen to what the word of God says. Now understand that the only way we can only possess our promise as an act of God's favor. And, 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 and the promise is usually possessed little by little. Look at what the Bible says in Exodus chapter 23 and uh, verse 29. This is the father speaking to the children of Israel concerning their promised land. And he says to them, I will not drive them out from before you in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the fields become too numerous. In other words, you know, there were giants and, and there were inhabitants in the land. And, and what, 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 the, what, what the Lord was saying to them is that I, I'm not going to just, you know, as you step into your inheritance, as you step into your promise, he says, I'm not going to just drive out all of the people out of the land in one year. He says, because if I drive them out in one year, then you will not have the capacity in order to sustain what I have given you. He says, so I will not drive them out in one year. But verse 30, he says, little by little, I will drive them out from before you until you have increased and you inherit the land. Notice y'all, notice what he says. He says, he says that, that, that I, I cannot drive the people out right now because right now you don't have the capacity. Right now you're lacking the capacity in order to, 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 to sustain what I have given unto you. So he says, what I'll do is I'll, 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 I'll make this transition little by little, hallelujah, until you have increased and until you have inherited the land, until you have inherited what is yours. Now notice family, notice if you would that, that phrase until you have increased and you inherit the land. Listen to what the Spirit of God revealed to me as I was as I was uh, uh, studying this. The Lord revealed to me. He says, He says, now now understand, the challenge in the life of of, of the believer today is, is not to try to convince God, not to try to convince our Father to bless us. That's not our challenge. Now I know in some religious circles, I know when you when you really don't understand the grace of God, uh, you know you 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 can pray and 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 you you think that God is somehow withholding blessings and and waiting for you to perform a certain way because and because when you perform a certain way, then He'll release those blessings. I I, I know that's what a lot of us think, but the truth of the matter is is that is that in this season. The challenge for the believer is not to try to convince the Father to bless us. But our challenge is that most believers, the way the, 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 the area where we're challenged is that most believers lack the capacity to receive that which the Father has already given. Did, did y'all catch that? Did y'all catch that? Most, most, most believers. We lack the capacity to receive what God has already given. That, that's why That's why today we're talking about and we're dealing with expanding your capacity to receive. See, the problem is not that, that, that God's favor is, 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 is not available for us. The problem is not that the inheritance is not readily available for us. The problem is that most believers, we, we lack the capacity to receive what God, our Father, has already given unto us. And therefore, our challenge is not to convince God to bless us because he's already blessed us. He's already blessed us with provision. He's already blessed us with health and healing. He's already blessed us with long life. He's already blessed us with, with, with um, uh, uh, protection from our end. He's already blessed us with these things. But the challenge for us 
as believers is, is, is to expand our capacity to receive what the Father has already provided. Now, now I'm about to say something, and, and, and if you don't remember anything else that, that I've said today, if you don't, if, if you don't remember anything else that 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 we that we that we have talked about, please, please, please remember this particular statement. When you consider what Jesus has done for us, when you really understand what Jesus has done, because of Jesus, God's favor is always flowing in our direction. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Come on, y'all. You, you got to get that. You got, you, you really need to understand that because of the finished work of Jesus, because Jesus has been resurrected from the dead, God's favor is always flowing in our direction. Come on, y'all put the word, put the word always, put that in the comment section. It is always flowing in our direction. I'm talking about his favor, y'all. I'm, I'm talking about I'm talking about unearned, undeserved, hallelujah, unmerited favor is always flowing in our direction, and it is always flowing in our direction because of the finished work of Jesus, not because we're so wonderful, not because we're so holy. And, 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 and yes, you ought to be holy, but, but that's not the reason his favor is flowing in your direction. His favor is flowing in your direction because of what Jesus has done. Right now, while you are receiving this word, the favor of God, no, y'all, I mean, literally, right now, favor is flowing in your direction. Right, right now, favor is flowing uh, uh, in, in, in your life, right this moment. See, it's not that God has not given us these things. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And we must understand that because of Jesus, God's favor is always flowing in our direction. Come on, y'all, put it in the comment section, always. Hallelujah, always. It's flowing in our direction when I'm, when I'm good and it's flowing in my direction when I miss it because the flow is not based on my performance. The flow is based upon Jesus sacrificing his life. Somebody say amen, hallelujah. Now listen, listen, think about it. Think about this for a moment. The Bible says that, that when Jesus was, was hanging on the cross, the Bible says that the moment he gave up the ghost, the moment he, he, he died, the Bible says that the veil was torn and it was torn from the top to the bottom. Now, 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 because of the fact that, that most of us have grown up under religion. Because of that fact, religion always has us looking at us. And when we see that the veil was torn from the top to the bottom, all we see is that when the veil was torn, that gave us access to the throne, that gave us access to our heavenly father. But what we fail to see is that when that veil was torn, the tearing of the veil, it didn't just allow us access to the Father, but when that veil was torn, when Jesus died and the veil was torn, yes, it allowed us access to the Father, but it also released all of God's favor to abound towards us. Hallelujah. In other words, the veil was stopping us from getting in and the veil was stopping God's blessings and God's favor from getting out. And when the veil was torn, yes, we got access to go in, but when that veil was torn, it also allowed all of God's favor to be released 
in abundance towards each and every one of us. And this favor that was released, come on, the tearing of the veil did not happen because of our performance. The tearing of the veil happened because of Jesus's death. And that death allowed us to get free access in, but it also allowed all of God's favor to flow out, to flow out towards each and every one of us and to flow out in abundance. Hallelujah. Are y'all hearing me today? And that's important, y'all, because it is that favor that connects us to our inheritance. So our challenge, our challenge is, is to expand our capacity to, 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 to receive. In, in, in other words, our challenge is to get to the place, y'all hear me today, get to the place where, where we understand that because of Jesus, we, we are able now to see the Father's favor flowing in our direction at all times. Hallelujah. And, 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 and when we're able to see the Father's favor flowing in our direction at all times, that is how we'll reclaim the inheritance that God has given unto us. Because the children of Israel, they did not claim their inheritance because of their strength, because of their ability to fight. But it was God's favor that allowed them to claim their land. And if, in fact, favor allowed them to possess their inheritance, the same favor that is flowing in our direction abundantly right now, that same favor will cause us to effortlessly claim or reclaim our inheritance as well. Are y'all hearing me today? Let me show it to you. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Hallelujah. Man, you got to understand that because of Jesus, God's favor is always flowing in our direction. Because of Jesus' death, his God's favor, it is flowing. Because when that veil was torn, it didn't just allow us to get in, but it allowed his favor to get out. Hallelujah. And now that favor, that favor of God, it is freely flowing abundantly in our direction and is flowing in our direction right now. Hallelujah. I said right this moment. And, 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 and our challenge now is to, is to be able to see that, to be able to see no matter where I go, no matter what I'm doing, his favor is flowing in my direction. I didn't say that his favor was flowing. I didn't say that his favor will flow. I said right now, no matter where I am and no matter what I am doing, his favor is flowing in my direction. Hallelujah. And it's all because of Jesus. Look at this in 2 Corinthians chapter number nine and verse number eight. Now, now, now in context, in context, when Paul was writing to the Corinthian believers here, he was talking about finances. He was talking about giving. But 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 when you when you look at this, there is a deeper revelation that the spirit of grace is given unto us. Listen to what he says in Second Corinthians chapter number nine and verse number eight. I mean, you got to get the revelation that because of Jesus, God's favor is always flowing in our direction right now right now hallelujah right now even as i talk about it i can sense his favor flowing in my direction i can sense his favor flowing in your direction but 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 the challenge is 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 we have to see it we have to see it not based on how we feel not based on some emotional experience that we have but based upon the word of the living god and based upon his word because of the finished work of jesus christ our savior his favor is always flowing in our direction always i said always listen to what the bible says i'll show you Second Corinthians chapter nine and verse eight, the word of God says, and God is able to make all grace, all favor 
abound toward you, that you always have an all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Now, listen to this. Listen to what he says. He says, now God is able. That speaks to God's ability. That speaks to the fact that God is almighty. He says, now God is able. He's able to do what? He's able to make all favor abound towards you. God has the power. God has the might. God has the ability to make all favor abound towards you. Why? So that you and I can have sufficiency in all things and not just have sufficiency in all things for ourselves, but to have it in abundance so that we could help other people. Now look at what he's saying, y'all. He says, God is able. He's able to do what? He's able to make all grace, all favor abound towards us. Now, 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 now here's the issue. Here's the issue because that's a powerful statement. Just knowing that God, our Father, is able to make all favor abound towards us so that we would have all sufficiency in all things. In other words, what he's saying is, if my body is sick, well, he has favor flowing toward, God is able to make his favor for healing flow towards us. You with me? So that even in my sickness, I have all sufficiency to be made well. Even if I'm lacking in my finances, his favor of provision is always flowing towards us. And the reason that that favor, it says God is able rather to make his favor for, for provision flow towards us. So that now in the point of my lack, his favor for provision is flowing towards me. And, and, and now that brings me out of lack into a place of prosperity. So, so he is able to make all favor abound towards us. Now, now here's the problem. Here's the issue. The issue is that when you say God is able to make all favor abound towards you, it sounds like that's future tense. It sounds like what we're saying is God has the power. God has the ability to make all of that favor flow towards you. He has the ability to do it. God is able to make. So it sounds almost like it's future tense. Like, like out in the future, God has the ability to make favor flow towards you. And, and the only problem with anything being in the future is, is, is something that has not happened. It stands the chance of not happening at all. So, so there's really no faith in me believing that God is able to make in the future all grace abound towards us. But when you study this out, that phrase to make, that phrase to make in the Greek is in what is called the aeroist tense. The aeroist tense is so awesome because the aeroist tense, the concept of a verb that is that is in the aeroist tense, is considered without regards to past, present, or future tense. In other words, when you look at the aeroist tense, it could be speaking about past tense, it could be speaking about present tense, or it could be speaking about future tense. So, so when it says God will make all grace abound towards you, which sounds like future tense, when you understand that it is in the aeroist tense in the Greek, then it could ultimately read that God has made all grace abound towards us. There's a problem with that, though. If God has made all grace in the past, if God has made all grace abound towards us, then maybe he stopped doing it. So, 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 so my faith would waver because even though he has done it, maybe he has now stopped doing it. And, 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 and in the aeroist tense, it could read, God will make all grace abound towards us. Well, again, 
that pushes it to the future. And anything in the future that hasn't happened yet, it may or may not happen. For instance, if, 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 if I say to you that there is a good chance of rain tomorrow, well, because the rain is set for tomorrow, then it may rain tomorrow, but then it may not rain because anything that has not yet happened, it always stands a chance of not happening at all. So, so in the Aeroist tense, it could read that God has made all grace abound, all favor abound towards us, past tense. But if it happened in the past, maybe he stopped. It could read God will make all grace abound towards us. Well, if it's in the future, then anything in the future that hasn't happened yet, it may or may not happen. So now my, my faith is still shaky. But 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 the arrow is tense. It's it, it speaks to past, present and future. So so not only could it say God has made all favor abound. Not only could it say God will make all favor abound, but it could actually read that God is now making all favor abound towards us. In other words, in other words, we must get to the point where we see this in the present tense, not God has made all grace abound towards us, not God will make all favor abound towards us. But right this moment, God is making, in the present tense, God is making all favor abound towards us, that we would have all sufficiency in all things. In other words, no matter what it is I'm going through, no matter what it is I'm dealing with, God is right now making all grace abound towards me. No matter what I am confronted with today, no matter what I am dealing with in this present moment, I can count on the fact that God, he is because of Jesus, he is right now causing all grace, hallelujah, all favor to abound towards me. In other words, it's not just enough favor for what I'm dealing with, but he is causing favor to abound. He is sending favor in abundance and he's doing it right now. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Declare that right now. Favor is flowing towards you right in this moment. If, if, if you're dealing with something in your family, favor is flowing towards you in this moment to help you through that situation. If you're dealing with something in your body, favor is flowing towards you right now to heal and to, to bring about health in your body. If, if, if your mind is all confused, favor is is flowing towards you right now. Come on, put it in the comment section. Right now, favor is flowing. Because of Jesus, God's favor is always, it is always flowing in our, our direction. It's not that it, it has flowed. It's not that it will flow one day. No, his favor, his favor, his unearned, his unmerited, his undeserved favor is flowing in our direction and it's flowing right now. Hallelujah. And, 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 and guess what? Tomorrow it's going to be flowing right at that moment. It's always flowing in the present. Do y'all see that? Can, can y'all see that? Man, man, this is so important. This is so important because, because our challenge as believers, I'm getting ready to leave this alone, but our challenge as believers is, is expanding our, our capacity to receive. Our challenge as believers is to get to the place where, where we understand that because of Jesus, hallelujah, because of his death, favor of the Father is always flowing in my direction. When I'm in a parking lot looking looking for a parking place, favor is flowing in my direction. 
When I'm when I'm when I'm trying to parent my children, favor is flowing in my direction. The favor to make me a successful parent. When 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 I when I'm trying to uh, 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 get a promotion on my job, favor is flowing in my direction. The favor of God because of Jesus, it is always flowing in our direction. And that's where the father wants us. The father wants us at a place where no matter what is going on in our life, our position is that because of Jesus, God is presently making all favor abound towards me. Favor is always flowing towards me that I have may have sufficiency in all things, that I may have whatever it takes to deal with and to handle whatever it is that's put before me. Are y'all hearing me today? See, our challenge, y'all, is, is to expand our capacity to receive. Our challenge is to, is to increase or be built up enough so that we can receive the inheritance, not based upon what we have done, but based upon what Jesus, our Savior, has already provided. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I, I got I to gotta stop right here because I, I'll, I'll deal with this. I'll pick this up. Um, I, I'll pick this up um, on, on, on Wednesday. In, in in grace reloaded as we as we come together because because we 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 I, I want to leave us I want to leave us right here where we are I, I want to leave us with 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 the with the thought in mind that because of Jesus because of because of his finished work be, because of what what he what he has done favor is flowing in our direction. Come on, you got to know that. You got to know that because of the finished work of Jesus, the favor of God is presently flowing in your direction. And it is that favor that allows us to tap into. It's that favor that allows us to connect with the inheritance that God, our Father, has already put in place. And our job is just simply to expand our capacity to receive. And, and, and we do that, we do that by consistently hearing the word of God's grace. And we do it by consistently proclaiming the death of Jesus. In other words, as we as we listen to the word of God's grace right now, right now what's happening to you is your, your capacity to receive is being expanded. Because as you hear the word of God's grace, as you begin to understand all that God has done for you because of Jesus, it, it, it expands your capacity to receive the inheritance. But then even as we commune with the Lord, as we commune with the Lord, we are proclaiming the death of Jesus. And as we proclaim the death of Jesus, we are again expanding our capacity to receive what the Father has put in place. Why? Why would communion expand our capacity to receive what the Father has put in place? I'll tell you why. Communion reminds us of the death of Jesus. And, and in reminding us and in proclaiming Jesus' death, we are being reminded of that which ultimately tore the veil and allowed the Father's favor to flow abundantly in the first place. So every time we commune, we're proclaiming God's, we're proclaiming the death of Jesus, and we're being reminded that it's because of this death that not only do I have access in, but his favor is able to flow abundantly out. So when that veil was torn, we got a chance to go in, but all of the favor and the blessings of God were released out in 
our direction. So because of the finished work of Jesus, God's favor, it is always flowing in our direction. Grab your communion elements. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says that on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he blessed it and broke it. He gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. He says, do this in remembrance of me. Go ahead and receive his broken body on today. The Bible says, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. He says, this cup is the blood of the new covenant, the blood that is shed for many for the remission of sins. As often as you do it, he says, do it in remembrance of me. Go ahead and receive the shed blood on today. For as often as you eat of the bread, drink of the cup, you do show forth the Lord's death until he returns. You're proclaiming his death. And as you and I receive the word of God's grace, as you and I commune with the Lord, every time we do it, we're expanding our capacity to receive. And in doing so, we are literally reclaiming our inheritance little by little until we come into the fullness of what it is the Father has provided. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to tell him thank you. No, no, really. Open your mouths, put it in the chat, and declare, thank you, Jesus. Because of you, God's favor is always flowing in my direction. Hallelujah. 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 And glory, glory to the name of our God. Listen, family. Listen, this month again is, is going to be such an awesome month. I'm so excited. Happy Mother's Day again to every single mother uh, that that is on this platform every mother happy mother's day to each and every one of you listen i want to of course remind each of you that on this upcoming wednesday on this upcoming wednesday of course we'll be sharing in our partnership with second harvest food bank and um we'll be uh sharing in our community food distribution uh this upcoming wednesday at 10 a.m volunteers you are welcome of course we just simply ask that you get there about 8 30 at the very latest so that we can prepare the boxes and begin the giveaway at 10 a.m and then of course i'm so excited about this uh this month being teachers appreciation month man we have so many awesome educators in our family uh, both natural as well as spiritual family. And we, we just love educators. We really do. We love educators because we understand the blessing that they are. We cannot be anything in this world without an educator. So we celebrate the educators this month. And in doing so, um, we are partnering with uh, Oaklawn, Oaklawn Elementary School, Oaklawn Middle School, rather, um, at 2215 Acadian Drive, we're going to celebrate. Uh, we're going to celebrate the educators there at Oaklawn. Um, so many of our family members are are on the staff there, and we we were just led to to celebrate them uh, this month. So on Friday, May twentieth, uh, we will be sharing in a teacher appreciation luncheon there at Oaklawn. 
That's right. We're going to prepare lunch for all of the teachers there at Oaklawn. You'll hear more about it even as we get a little closer. But it is again on Friday, Friday, May 20th. If you want to be a, a part of it, we just ask that you meet us at Oaklawn, that you meet us there no later than 10 a.m. No later than 10 a.m. Meet us there at Oaklawn. We'll set everything up as we share in Teachers Appreciation Month in this Teachers Appreciation Luncheon. And then, of course, again, I want to uh, encourage as many of you as possible to meet us as we share, as we share with Pastor Corian Gray at the New Zion Baptist Church, uh, Grand Caillou Road, 263 Grand Caillou Road. Meet us over there on this upcoming Sunday. We'll be um, here on our virtual platform as well at 9 a.m. But of course, we'll be sharing with Pastor Corian Gray uh, during the 10 a.m. hour. So please, 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 those of you who can uh, meet us there, it is going to be a tremendous blessing. And then finally, family, uh, the first Sunday in June, mark the first Sunday in June, because again, we're coming together I'm so excited about this. We're coming together for our family, our first family in-person worship experience that we've had in quite some time, and we'll do it right on our campus. Come on, family. You know how we do things. Everything we do, we do it five-star. So we're going to, of course, do this in a way that everyone is extremely comfortable, and we're going to have a great time in worship, a great time in the Word, and a great time in prayer and fellowship. So we're looking forward to it, and we look forward to seeing each of you there. Listen, let's go ahead and give unto the Lord because it is in and through our giving that we continue to position ourselves to receive the blessings that God, our Father, has already put in place for us. And with that being said, we understand that the tithe is holy unto the Lord. 10 cents out of every dollar, 10 cents out of every dollar, that of course, that belongs to the Lord. Never ever the ceiling where we end, but it's always, it is always the floor where we begin. We give a liberal offering because the Bible says that it is the liberal soul that shall be made fat. Then of course, pastor's love gift. If I am a blessing to you, you can sow seed into my life. Uh, my wife's life, of course, and um, we're good ground. We're good ground. And the word of God says that when you receive the prophet in the name of a prophet, the father himself will provide you with a prophet's reward. So all of the information is right there. B-L-O-H-T, B-L-O-H-O. -O. You can text to give, text that to 28950. You can use our cash app, dollar sign, B-L-H-O-U-M-A dollar sign BL Homa, or go to the website www.beaconlightofhoma.org or of course again you can drop it in the mail 4325 West Park Avenue Gray Louisiana 70359 whatever you do make sure that you get some seed in the ground because God he loves a cheerful giver also, I do want to encourage those of you who can to meet us on Tuesday evening for intercessory prayer at 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock p.m., never ever very long, but always extremely powerful. Prayer does still work. So I want to encourage you. The information is right there, 605 605-475-2875. The access code is 6582232 pound. You won't be able to be heard, but you can listen in like I do most of the time. I listen in and just stay in agreement with our awesome prayer ministry. So again, again, I want to encourage all of you. Let's leave today understanding that because of Jesus, because of Jesus, if you don't remember anything else that was said today, please, please, please remember that because of Jesus, God's favor is always, I said always, it is always 
flowing in our direction and it's flowing in our direction in abundance. That's all we have today, family. Thank you so much for connecting. I look forward to connecting with you Wednesday, seven o'clock, Grace Reloaded. Myself, along with my wife, Elder Lynette, will be right here for our family check-in. We'll see you then. But until then, remember, you don't fight for victory. Stand in your place of victory because through Jesus Christ, the victory is already yours. God bless you, family. Enjoy the rest of this awesome day.